Blog Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim G.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of the Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of the Core Business Show, Tim G.K. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Core Business Show. I'm Tim J.K., your host. Today, I have the pleasure of having on the show John Cruz. We have some technical difficulties. What we're going to do is we're probably going to give him five minutes. If not, we're going to go ahead and reschedule the show for two hours from now, if possible, at noon, if he can do it. Anyway, John has a magazine out of Houston called Small Business Today. He just launched this magazine a month ago. He's in his second edition, I believe, of the magazine. He launched it in March, and he's now with a new edition of his magazine. He has also a local broadcast he does on Wall Street Journal show station out of Houston at 11.10 a.m. It's called uh, it's from Wall Street Radio Network that runs from 5 to 6 Central Time. And again, that show airs daily, Monday through Friday. So what we're going to do is going to kind of give five minutes, and if not, we can go ahead and reschedule the show, and uh, probably is a miscommunication or something, but probably on our end. But anyway, we want to take care of it and have him back on the show if he can. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and play a ad from our sponsor, uh, from Apple Capital Group, and then we'll come back and go from there. Really appreciate it for you listening and tuning in. Take care. Hold on. You're listening to The Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours, and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome back to The Core. Once again, here's Tim Jacquet. Okay, we're back with Tim Jacquet with The Core Business Show. What I'm going to do is going to play Blue Skies from one of my groups out of Corpus Christi, Texas. And we're going to listen to them for about a couple of minutes, and we're going to come back with the show. Well, that was Blue Skies by Corpus Christi Choir out of Corpus Christi, Texas. Great group, great friend of mine, Daryl Russian out of that group, one of the singers there. So right now, we're going to tune in in a few minutes with John Cruz, get beyond in a few moments. And again, he runs a small business magazine out of Houston, Texas, just launched it a couple months ago. And he also hosts a show in the uh, Houston area, and which is uh, off the Wall Street Journal. It's called the Wall Street Journal sh- Network. And his shows air from 5 to 6 daily, Monday through Friday. So anyway, uh, he'll be on the line in a few minutes. And we're going to go ahead and play another tune while he dials in. Hey, good morning, John. John is here. Okay, great. Thanks for joining the program. I guess to to begin with, tell us about yourself, how you guys started. Just tell them about your magazine and also your radio show, but kind of take us to the beginning of knowing John Cruz and his story. Well, you know, I initially started out in business as a mortgage banker, and we grew our firm. One time we were the largest mortgage brokerage yeah, in the state of Texas. We had over 147 loan officers. We had over 28 full-time staff. So we had a nice size organization. Well, we mm-hmm. sold that company in 2005. And after selling out, you know, I did some work with a small company, a small private equity company in New York. And after 2008, I just got totally burned out on the finance business. Mm-hmm. And a friend of mine who, who uh, ran a magazine that I used to advertise in a real estate publication, he had an opportunity where some investment, some investors that had been uh, behind him were ready to back out. 
and he gave me the opportunity. I stepped in, and, and we ended up, you know, uh, doing very well with that magazine and decided that, you know what, we should do this same model, but for small businesses, whereby we bring them uh, information that's relevant to starting and operating a small business because we think that so many of the other larger publications sometimes don't really focus on that. You know, that they, they've sort of lost their way. If you look at, you know, an Inc. magazine or a Fast Company or Forbes, they talk about all these great firms that are doing great things all over the world. But sometimes, you know, a small business person isn't able to get all that they need out of a publication like that. And that's why we developed Small Business Today. And, you know, and it's been going very, very well. We've been well received in our community. Wow. Yeah, just to talk about that, I think uh, Inc. Magazine and Entrepreneur and several others, I guess some of the information is great, but you've got to be at a certain level. If not, is if you're a startup or if you're even if you've been in business for a while, it just doesn't relate. Some things, yeah, on the market end will relate to you if you have uh, if you can grab it. But other than that, it takes a different level and you have to get there first. So it's great to have a magazine like yours that kind of talk about the basics and uh, in the fields and kind of tell them, okay, here where you are now, here's a company similar to you, and you can kind of grab a hold and take what they've done and move forward from there. It's getting on the fence is always the hardest thing and sustaining That's right. yourself. And there's so many people right now, Tim, that are, you know, uh, you know, they're trying to find their way. I mean, there are a lot of people who are realizing that, you know what, corporate America is going to take care of my here and now, but it's not necessarily going to take care of my future. And if corporate America is willing to pay me, you know, forty, fifty, or $150,000 for my skills and talent, what would the open market pay for them? if I were to start my own business. And so that's what we really like to focus on because, believe me, I've started enough businesses and failed that, you know, I, I know how to navigate the minefield, as it were. So we like to focus on what things that you should be doing to uh, make your route to success a short one. In focusing on your magazine and some of the business that you've had and you had your challenges and you pull yourself back up again, what did, besides, you know, they always say financing Finance is always the main problem, but that usually is not the case of financing because you can have great money behind you. But what is the number one thing you're finding besides financing that business are having issues with? Well, I say the financing is definitely number one, having enough money coming in uh, to fuel the business and keep it growing at a steady pace. That is, I'd say, hands down, is the largest challenge. But the second mm -hmm. challenge to that that's equally as important is finding the right people. And we focus on that a lot, you know, in terms of the articles that we write. And I do a lot of speaking engagements here in Houston, and that's one of the things that I really like to put a lot of emphasis on. Because when I started my my first mortgage company, I was properly funded. I raised over $350,000 to get that company off the ground, which was more than enough money to start a service business, and I still mm -hmm. failed. But the reason that I failed wasn't because I wasn't properly uh, uh, capitalized, but I feel because I didn't have the right people playing the right position. And so I had to go back to the drawing board and refigure how to make this work with the right capital as well as having the right people. So I really tell people that you want to focus on your team, which in my opinion can be more important than having the right and having the money. But getting the right people, I mean, that everybody faces that. How did you solve that problem of getting the right people? Because it's kind of hard. Who can you trust? You can't necessarily go to your family or depend on your family because they have a different the image is you know they too personal involved in this. And you really need to find that right person. How did you find that right person that can work as a team with you? Well, one of the things that I did is I went the route of trying to hire friends college friends, family members, and none of those people worked out. I've never had a person uh, work in my organization successfully that I had a personal relationship prior to. So it does, for some people, it does work. It just never worked for me. What I did is I found, I figured out what it took to be successful in every area of my business. So I was able to identify what skills and talents does this person need to have if they're going to be my operations person, if a person is going to be my head processor, if a person is going to be my head underwriter, what are the skills and talents? And then I went and found people with those talents, but not with the experience necessarily. 
But it was more important to me to get the person that possessed the talent, that drive and desire to grow themselves inside of an organization. Wow. And then I developed them and gave because I could give you all the experience that you need. Experience wasn't important for me, but I needed someone that possessed a certain skill set. So I looked at my operation as though it were a, and I like to use analogies for sports. So I looked at it as though it was a football team. I was the mm-hmm. quarterback. And then I needed a good receiver. I needed a good running back. I needed someone who could kick well. And I found those individuals and I, who had those skills, and I put them in a position where they could exploit their skill set and grow the organization, and they could flourish themselves. And we were able to build our company up, and we came out virtually out of nowhere. And I didn't have very many people that had mortgage experience because I wasn't really relying on that as much as I was them possessing a set of skills that I knew could make them successful. Okay. So in taking that experience and a skill, your advice is always go towards the talent. And I think with the talent, you can always, like you mentioned, you can develop the skill. Do you think that's what some business run into problems because you're looking for the experience of a person versus looking for the talent? Oh, uh, absolutely. Because it, And I ran into that. You know, I would bring in individuals who had more experience than I did. But the thing is, is that what they lacked is they didn't have the ability to follow my lead. And so, and there would be times where I'd bring people in who had uh, lots of experience and I had to continuously try to re-educate them and convince them to forget what they think they know. Because if (laughs) wherever you were and how you were doing it, if it worked so well there, you wouldn't be here with me. And, And so I don't want to hear how we did it at Bank of America Mortgage or how we did it when we were at Countrywide. You know, if it worked there, we, you and I wouldn't be working together. So I realized that, you know what, I got to find people with the same level of talent, you know, who have the ability to be developed, and I'll get them, I'll give them the experience that they need. Well, wow. when you de- decide to one day start your magazine, Small Business Today, and you duplicate the same process you had on the prior magazine, how did you come up with that particular title? I mean, there's a lot of small business, and I guess it, within the Houston market, you're in a great market to build from. So how you guys actually came up, you already had the, the focus of the story, but now you had to come with a title, and the title and the branding is always hard for any business to come up with. Did that just come to you, just say, hey, we just make it just small business today, or it took a lot of scholarship and a lot of time to come up with that title? Well, and you know, our executive publisher who publishes uh, small business today, we also publish a magazine called Premier Agent Magazine, which is a real estate publication. I have to give mm-hmm. the credit to Steve. Steve Levine. Steve is our publisher, and Steve has more than 30 years' experience in the publishing business. He's been a longtime friend of mine, and I have to give him the credit. He was the one that came up with the name, and you know, he came to me and said, John, we're going to do this magazine, but it has to be a today type of magazine. It has to be totally focused and dedicated to small business, and he said that I think the title should be Small Business Today, and everyone that we had involved, we all voted on about, I think we had maybe eight or nine names on a list that we all were kicking around, and he got a unanimous vote for that name, and that was it. So, uh, <laughs> And once we saw that it was available, we all re- we just ran with it. Wow. You know, mag- having the magazine in this day and age is, is a challenge for a lot of businesses. And I, I know your publisher had experience with another magazine. And having a business magazine in the Houston market, were there any doubts that that magazine will succeed or have run through some challenges because you have so many publications out there? Well, you know what? I'd be uh, uh, lying if I said no. You know, I do, you know, when I look at, you know, the, the landscape for a print publication, you know, uh, 90% of the magazines that are started aren't around 24 months later. And But the resolve that I have with this particular publication is that, that we're not competing with any other publication in our city. I mean, some people think that, well, John, you guys are like the Houston Business Journal, aren't you? And I say that, no, we're, we're not at all like them. That's, no. The Houston Business Journal is a news publication, and they're not focused on small business. They're not called the Houston Small Business <laughs> Journal. They're just called the Houston <laughs> Business Journal. And so, so the thing is that when I really look at our unique selling proposition and what truly makes us different, there's no one else in our landscape. And so for people who are in business-to-business sales that are looking to get in touch with uh, touch with other small businesses and those businesses are they're coming to us and seeking us out in terms of advertising and working with us because 
they need to touch that market, and people are picking up our publication because they want that education. So it, it so far it's been working out, and, and we do more than just focus on printing. Like if you were to advertise an entrepreneur magazine, the only thing that you're going to get from entrepreneur is the fact that they're going to put you in their magazine and they're going to distribute those magazines regionally or uh, nationally for you, depending on what you pay. Mm-hmm. Well. When you advertise with us, because our magazine is focused on the Houston business footprint, we do a marketing event, or rather a networking event every month where we honor the person who is on the cover of our magazine. And we bring that person's top-level executives and their top customers and clients, and we we honor who they are. But we also bring our advertisers in people that write in our publication. And so we have a network of, of individuals that are in one room where everybody in the room is someone that you need to know. So when you start working with us, not only do you get a, a invitation to our invitation-only networking event, it's not open to the public, but we also do a small business talk show on the Wall Street Radio Network. We also feature your business on there. We do a television show with Comcast. Comcast and the city of Houston have come together to do a web TV channel. So we have a channel on there where we do a daily show. We bring you on that show as well. So we really get behind you and your business. And I think that's one of the things that that makes us successful, that has made us successful so soon, is because we take an interest in your success, more so than just you buying an ad and we say, okay, hopefully, you know, it'll work out for you. We'll see you again in 12 months. I mean, we put you in touch with people that are going to empower your life, empower your business. And we take a personal interest in who you are and what you do. Wow. So not only they have the opportunity with the print, they also have an opportunity for the radio and they have an opportunity now for a cable interview as well. Absolutely. And, I, and, and wow. So they're really you're just taking care of from one print medium to the end. You know, well, that's really great. Kind of tell us about the radio show that you do every day between five and six. Well, our radio show, it airs, like you said, between five and six. And, the sh- and it's on the KTEK dial here in Houston, which is 1110 AM. And, mm-hmm. and our show is focused on we bring successful entrepreneurs, consultants, people who work with city municipalities, bring these people on who have the ability to impact and empower small businesses. And we ask them questions. We ask them tough questions on, you know, how can I get a contract with the city? Who do I talk to? Where do I start? And as far as the entrepreneurs, we ask them the tough questions in terms of what was the biggest mistake that you ever made? How did you overcome that? How did you raise money to start your business? How did you go out and find clients like Exxon, Halliburton? You know, how does a small business do that? All the questions that you would love to sit down and ask, you know, any successful person in any market, that's what we do on our show on a daily basis. And even the the gentleman that we have today is also the person who's on the cover of our May issue. Uh, His name is Hank Moore, and Hank has been an advisor to three U.S. presidents. He was the personal advisor to the Disney Corporation and Michael Mm -hmm. Eisner when Michael was the president. And Hank operates his consulting business right here in Houston, and he can tell you all sorts of stories about how to be successful in business and what things worked and what things didn't work for small and large businesses. So we want to bring that level of education to our listeners, and that's what we do on a daily basis. Wow. And then segueing then to the TV show that you have on uh, Comcast, you mentioned, it's kind of a web yes, show or is it on that channel? Well, it's a web show, web TV channel. It's called HoustonsVoice.com, and we have a channel on that URL, as well mm-hmm. as we play daily on a Houston channel, on a digital channel here in Houston, and that channel is 43.8. And so, and we have a daily show that, that we do, and it's basically the same thing, the same concept that we've done with our radio show. We do that with our television show. And now on the television show, what we will do as well is we'll bring individuals on who may be advertisers with us or who may be aspiring to grow their business. So from time to time, I may have myself and another consultant sitting there and we're interviewing a small business and we're telling them some things that they can do to overcome some of the challenges and how to grow their footprint or grow their product uh, line. So, and they can use that in their marketing or they can use that as an educational tool to take back to their team and say, guys, look, we need to do our, we need to refocus and, and, and probably uh, uh, do some things differently. So that's, that's the only slight difference in the television show as opposed to what we do on the radio. What number one thing that normally stands out with you while well, some of your interviews, the advice they have given to the public when you actually did the interview itself? 
Well, I tell you what, one of the things that I'm considering is I'm consider I've probably done five or six hundred interviews and I'm thinking of, of compiling all of my notes that I've taken in each of these interviews <laughs> and sort of putting that in one unified format for our readers. But, but I'd say some of the advice that I get is, let's say when, as it relates to marketing, most small business people do not put enough emphasis in how they market themselves and they quit too soon. And then the same can be said even if you decide to run your business and things aren't going as successfully at first as you would like them to, you can't quit so soon. And there are a lot of people who allow the public to change their mind about what they're doing. And uh, most of the people who have been successful, they, the first thing that they say in their interviews is do not quit if you know that what you're doing is the right thing and you know that your business is the right business for you, then don't listen to the naysayers. Don't quit. And and I think wow. that, that just goes across the board. Wow. Don't quit. So you mentioned that a lot of businesses will get started in trying their marketing efforts, but they say, oh, this is not really working. But it could be working in one sense, making deposits, but it's just not coming to action at the moment. But at least it's building a brand that, you know, they hear you so many times or when that need arises, at least they have something they can go to. So you're saying that people are just starting to, when they do their marketing, because they can't measure to get the financial reward right now, they just stop and that's the wrong thing to do. Well, I'll tell you this. Our next cover is a gentleman who runs the largest advertising agency in the state of Texas. His name is Phil Morabito, and he has a great article on how to manage your advertising. Because one of the things that he points out is that, look, Tim, if I could bring you in and put you a million people, then what would you say to them? And what would be your call to action? So he says that, you know, when you do advertising, if something isn't working, you can't just assume that it's not working simply because you're not getting a response. If you know that that medium is bringing you in touch with the people that you need to be in touch with, then you have to look at your message. And you have to look at the type of ad that you're using. And a funny story that I always tell with Steve Levine and myself, when I was running a struggling mortgage company, I called him over one day to cancel an ad that I was doing in his publication. Well, he came over and, and after we talked for about an hour, I ended up not only not canceling, but I signed up for the other two magazines that he also produced. And he helped me understand that his message is wrong. And you're not getting enough reach because you're not in all of our publications. And once I did that, I made a return on my most, most small business people, Tim. We start a business because I make a great sandwich or because I provide a good service or I make a great widget. But we don't really know how to run a business. So the first thing that you should be looking to do as a small business owner is get as much education as you can on how to run a business, not how to provide your service better or make a better sandwich. You already know how to do that. Your passion already lies there. But you need mm -hmm. to get some really quick education on how do I become a better business owner and start driving my ship from the captain's chair instead of always being, you know, in the coal room, shoveling coal into the ship to make it run. You know, business owners can't, you can't navigate your ship from the coal room. Wow. And some of them try to do everything from marketing to finance to bookkeeping to sales and, and it gets overwhelming and, and they can't really can't handle on anything because they, it's a, yeah. It's, it's a, it's a recipe for disaster. You're right. Wow. When you start your program in December, uh, your radio show, I guess when, like anybody do any shows that goes every single day, what challenges are you running into and trying to prepare for a show every single day? Not only you do a show, you do a magazine, you do a TV broadcast at the same time. How do you manage all of that? Well, I have a great team. I mean, I really considered letting one of the things go. Like, I really love TV. My passion now, I think, is really lying in TV. But, you know, my team is saying, John, you know, let's keep it going. So my team is willing to pick up more of the slack for me so that I can continue to bring our message to the entrepreneurial public. And really, without them, you know, I don't know how I would manage because I have a, you know, a person who does all of my scheduling and booking. Matter of fact, we use a Google Calendar and every person on the team that works with us is always looking for small business talent. So when they mm -hmm. meet someone, they know exactly what information they need to get from them. They need they know the exact type of story that we're looking for to bring that to the public. 
and they have the ability to book those shows. So they book shows, you know, a month in advance. I don't even know who's up next. And I have someone else who prepares the interview, does all the research, and then they send that information to me. So all of my questions are lined out. They have just the points that are relevant in terms of what this person has accomplished, Mm -hmm. how they run and operate their business. So it really makes it easy for me to show up and just go to work. And without without them, there's no way that I could do all of this. Wow. So you have one person that just do the booking, then another person that actually prepares all the interview, and they just hand everything over to you. It's two people or just one? They just no, no, no. Well, actually, we have uh, nine people that work in our organization, and so nine of them all have the ability to book to book people. But you know, one of the mm-hmm. things that we did, Tim, that 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 makes it easy for us is that we mm-hmm. reached out to all of the public relation firms here in Houston. So once we did that and we let them know that we have a show, this is the format and this is what we're looking for, now they send us people. So we constantly are going through, you know, a a database of individuals that these PR people are trying to get exposure for entrepreneurs, speakers, trainers. So, So we always have individuals who are waiting in the wings to get on the show. But any nine of the people in my organization have the ability to book someone for the show, but I only have one person that prepares my interviews because they know my interview style. They know mm-hmm. uh, you know what I think is important. And so I only have one person that does that. And uh, once she puts all of that together and she gives it to me, I'm able to just step right on stage and read from the script almost. It goes <laughs> without a hit. Yeah, I've listened to your show several times over the, the last couple of months, and, and I try to tune into it at least once or twice a week. And I guess you start one at the other. How do you think it's all about? So I guess you told us your little secret sauce. You have your assistant prepare everything for you, and you just blow with it. Wow. That's right. I just put a little, I guess you could say a little paprika on the top, you know, but the meal is already prepared for me. Cause once she saw the direction that I was going and how I like to conduct my interviews, I mean, she's mm-hmm. very keen in terms of knowing, you know, uh, how my wit is. And so she writes the interviews according to my personality. And so it works out. Now, here recently, we've decided to bring on a co-host because my schedule does call for me to travel a little more now that our magazine is actually here. And so we have, we've sort of rebranded the show instead of it being Small Business Today with John Cruz. It's now Small Business Today with Cruz and Hughes. And Irvin is a great guy. He's been a commercial banker for over 20 years, and he has sat in for me in the past when I was doing my show on another network. So when bringing him on not only adds a different dynamic to the show, but it also helps if I have to step away and do something, I don't have to cancel people that we've already booked. Urban is more than competent and able to carry the show in my app. So uh, hopefully you'll listen and, and let me know what you think about our new format. Yeah, I just listened to it, I think, last week. And I think I listened to it actually on Monday. I tried to listen to it yesterday. Okay. And I think the web portion of that was going in and out. So I didn't get to hear much of it yesterday. I think it was for the whole hour just going. So I had some technical issues. I know it was on our end or is maybe it's the player since we're listening through it on the Internet. But I started listening. I said, okay, they might have added a co-host last week. So you know, I figured that's why I said, my gosh, this guy has a lot dealing with a magazine, dealing with a TV show, and that's a lot. And also you're doing some public speaking. Any advice that you would give to people who start in a radio broadcast? I have a question here. What they actually need to do, if that makes sense. Well, the same advice that I'd give to someone who's doing a radio broadcast would be the same advice that I'd give to someone who's starting a business. Mm-hmm. Because if you're starting anything, it, the bottom line is, does it make money? And how can I grow this this operation as quickly as possible? The best thing that you can do, and the thing that has worked for me, is I immediately aligned myself with all of the business organizations in Houston. And so I would say to you, whomever you're depending on for guests, whatever your topics are, whatever you're trying to find, there's an organization somewhere that exists where somebody will send you people, somebody will give you advice. If you look at our magazine and you go to our page that has our publisher's advisory board and you look Mm -hmm. at the number of people that are on that board and read some of the things that they've done, and we've got people from Goldman Sachs on there, we've got the guy who actually started the first CRM software, the ACT software. His mm-hmm. name is Mike Muni. Mike is the one who developed and designed that software and ended up selling it to Symantec. So once I put my package together of what I wanted my radio show to be like and my magazine, I went out and found the people who were the best of the best. I interviewed them, and then 
I put, you know, a, a level of commitment on them to continue to help me grow this for the benefit of our listeners by finding the other people. And it has just blossomed and taken off, and it picked up some steam, and it's running on its own. So my thing is that don't – let me give you this bit of advice. If you were to look at what it would take to be successful in the 19th, 18th, or 20th century, you were going to make money, big-time money. You'd make that money using the earth's resources, which means that you do it in cotton, you do it in cattle, or you do it in oil. Those were how the biggest wealth families, how the biggest families who generated wealth, that's how they generally did it. And mm -hmm. the common denominator between all three of those, Tim, was that you had to have land. If you didn't have land, you could not exploit any of the earth's resources. So if your old man didn't die and leave you a million acres somewhere, the chances of you being able to build generational wealth for your family is going to be slim to none in those centuries. Now, what is the greatest resource now? It's no longer the earth's resources. Your greatest resource as a small business person is your ability to touch impact and influence people. That's the whole reason why Mark Zuckerberg was able to get a billion dollars from investors when he had no real uh, plan on how he was going to monetize his business. That's the whole reason why Facebook paid a billion dollars for Instagram. The company's not worth that if you look at it from a traditional sense. It doesn't have no. a billion dollars of revenue. It, does, it doesn't have assets. So your greatest resource, and most people do not understand that, even in the 21st century, that your greatest resource is people. So I invest everything that I am into the development of my network, and my network continues to take care of me. Wow. And, and that's, that's as simply, I can't put it any more simply than that. If you invest everything that you have into the right group of people, that group will take care of you. To a wow, that some, never of. wow, that's some great advice. But I really, really appreciate you coming on to the program. Sorry about the mix-up. I'm going to continue to listen to your show, and of course I'm going to ask you to come back in the future. Anytime you want me, I'm here for you. Great. John Cruz, thank you so much. Thank you, Tim. Have a great day. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Again, it's an interview with John Cruz with uh, Small Business Today and also a host of Small Business Today with Houston Cruz in uh, Houston, Texas. Everybody, thank you for listening to the program today. Again, this is another production of The Core Business Show with Tim J.K. You can download this episode on iTunes, or Blog Talk Radio Network, or on blog.apple capital group. Also, we ask that you share these episodes and write reviews if you don't mind. Uh, Google Plus them or write a review in iTunes so we can measure to make sure these programs are meeting your needs. Thank you for listening, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For a free quote on equipment leasing and financing, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. And fill out the information to receive your free quote. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. Thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.